Okay, so we are doing edge work. Um, and you remember, this is edge work on the uh, Golf Riller uh, channel. And you remember um, how you're getting your, your this, uh, you know, completely flat all the way around. And this is kind of a cool moment because I, for the first time, you have these sort of two pieces sort of come together, the ribs and the, uh, and the back. And you can see uh, the inside is still like a slaughterhouse. I mean, it's really sloppy in there. But what you're doing is you're using the knife and files to match the back to the ribs. And um, there are a few ways to do that. Uh, I use the knife, um, and I use files, and I use the flat bottom plane. So um, you can see I have it clamped um, here because I want my I want my ribs to be stable. So um, and I have three clamps. Um, you know, surely I could put one more here because that allows me to work on the corners. And then once I have a lot done on the corners, then I, um, then I put clamps on the corners and then work this part. So. Okay, so the first thing, um, is I'm going to take my calipers and a pencil. I usually have a pencil. <laughs> so I always have a pencil. So I take my calipers and I'm going to mark the place where the corners touch. All right? So this has a sliding, this thing slides out the longer it is, so I know that my corner is that, far, that much far away. Then I just mark that here. So I know that that's, that's where my corner is because I can't, I'm working looking down on it, you know, so. So what I, the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, you could since it's pretty far away actually you can do it's probably the fastest to use a knife and you want to be careful because you can have a breakout to where you know it breaks off and you don't want that is it too loud I'm not sure so yeah then I just um, start slowly and carefully bringing my corner to where I want. And the goal of this is to get this sort of, you know, these corners sort of beginning, you have want this corners kind of uniform, um, pointing in the direction that you want. I don't know how to explain that. Any, um, safe is to is just, just to take this and oh that's way in there there we go so here is my rib here etc I kind of know already I've, I've done you know right there's a kind of now you have a kind of map of Actually, I never, I don't do, really do this. There's my rib. Yeah, so my rib is, you know, somewhere around there. So, um, and 
if you read the Mokul Kunstesgeigenbau, uh, then he says there are file and virt virtuosi, you know, these fi file virtuosos. Uh, and Mokul advocates using only the knife. Um, and that's fine. You can do it either way. Um, so I'm a file virtuoso. This can probably, this can be done with more of the knife, but I'll do it with this just to kind of demonstrate. That you want to get your corner sort of pointing. Yeah, you can also feel with your finger. I, I, I kind of know where my ribs are here, you know. So, and you do want to be really careful because what you're going to have overhang, what they call overhang on here. So what I'm doing now is this is a pretty crude tool. Is um, I'll just get it sort of close to where I want very crudely and then you're gonna spend a lot of time on this so with this file you can get these nice sort of this motion going this way right so so you don't you don't want to make this u shape in the um to do is make an elegant, a rough, elegant outline that is slowly moving towards my ribs. Because, I don't know if you can see, but I mean, this is really ugly, you know. Here you, um, you have cuts from the spiral blade, which, you know, it's not accurate. So I'm just using this file in the beginning. This can be a little weird and tricky when you're on this side. even close you could just take a peek at what's going on yeah so you can see I don't know if you can see it's a little bit more elegant yeah but it's not even close um, so I can do more of the rough filing and you can see how far how far these are these are overhanging quite a lot so what I'm going to do is, is do that again. You know, the reason that you, you remove from here first is because, um, how do I explain this? Um, because you have this curve moving this way, yeah? And both sides are going to terminate into a bee sting, what they call a bee sting. And that's where the purfling comes in. So the reason this is important is that if you have something that's not elegant, then when you inlay your purfling, um, which hopefully is tomorrow, you're going to have this black line. Well, it's more than a black line, but it's a, it's a layer of three pieces of wood. Yeah. 
and it's going once it's inlaid it's going to accentuate the ugliness that you did like and pop out you know so you sp spend a lot of time on this um that's important hold on um i can't work without music oh so what you haven't seen Meet Debbie. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> um, and we will be playing some terrible, terrible, terrible uh, music. Um, I have some terrible records. Whew, they're so bad. This is actually an amazing piece of music. Okay, so again, yeah, I can just feel with my fingers. And let me go ahead and mark that just to be safe. So my corner is the tip of my corner. Once again, I lost my pencil. I'm like, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> Yeah, so the, the, the amount of overhang that you do, um, that's, that could be personal. I, I like, I like, a, like less overhang. Um, I like it when the, when the ribs are like, uh, when the plate is like really close to the ribs. Um, so yeah, let's do that. And you can use the knife. Um. I really like this tool, though. This is I'm a fi file virtuoso, so. instrument tattooed on, on, on my brain already because I've looked at it a million times but you can um, have a photograph of your instrument say maybe if you have your iPad here and you're just looking at it you know it's um, it's what, what, what you call a visual memory where you you start to develop a sense of um, just looking at things you know um, and you can do that in your everyday life um, for instance, uh, doing painting um, or draw, drawing, not drawing violins, you can draw violins, that's a great idea, but also um, d figurative drawing or draw anything, still lifes. Um, this will help you train your eye to, to see something and replicate it in wood. Um, I like doing uh, wood cuts. Uh, which is in the back there you can see a naked lady um, yeah um, because I'm better at carving wood than I am drawing um, and there's another one on the wall there that's really badly done you can't see her but she's I was trying to draw the the the, br the breast you know you would think I'd be able to draw a breast right I've seen them before but um, I couldn't do it. And then finally, I just took the gouge and like, um, and just carved a boob, you know, and I was like, okay, that's it. So um, yeah, so you look at the corners of the original and, uh, or tattoo it in your, in your memory. Um, but since I don't make exact copies, um, you know, it will look like a tabor and it will look like a tabor gofrilla or, you know. Right, so let's go, let's work. <laughs> Two 
points to meet, and then the purfling's going to be inlaid. <laughs> So eventually you're controlling the line, but in essence, this line is going to reflect the ribs no matter what. But there's a certain amount of artistic freedom um, in the amount of overhang that you leave. Because for me personally, I, I really don't care about um, perfectly even overhang. Um, that's the kind of thing that they judge the violin competitions with. And, you know, it just doesn't interest me, you know, to, to get perfectly even to a tenth of a millimeter, it really doesn't affect the sound, so I'd rather have something that's kind of freaky and, and that catches the eye, because when you put the purfling in, you're going to see that outline, uh, you're really going to see any ugliness or any sort of, you know, something that's not elegant is going to pop, you know, out. Uh, Oh yeah, that's another thing, was um, a good reason to work in batches is that, um, like right now the varnish is drying on the, um, on the violon, on the violone. It's sitting on the clavichord soaking up the sun on that side of the house. So, um, yeah, so you, you know, you, you want to have, when something is drying or when the glue is drying on one instrument, you want to be able to pick something else up. That way you can work all day long. Or, um, so, yeah, so I got some of the things here. I've got a, a gamba, a viola de, oh, this is a tenor viola de gamba. And um, uh, it's something that probably won't sell. <laughs> so that's good. A lot of times I will make things that I, that I want. Um, and then they, hopefully, hopefully they won't sell. So, it's another good tip, work in batches where you make. carefully because it's going to be a similar situation to where the grain is changing so you'll be that might be a, a, another pretty fast faster maybe actually faster is that you have your ribs this way and then you can actually look at what you're doing and cut with the knife that's also fine so this is not ergonomically very good but the grain will generally go it's going to go this way, and then it usually it will it will change here and start splitting. So then you have to go from the tip of the corner this way, um, and then here it will go this way. Yeah. So I have a lot of meat here. I can use my knife, and the knife actually makes really elegant um, cuts if you're good. Um, I'm just I like the file, you know. So yeah, that's another way to do it. Um, the reason I like the file is the file doesn't care what direction the grain is going. Yeah? So this is really far away. You see, if you, it's, it's really far away from where I want to go. So that's going to take me a while. Just the main thing is to understand the technique. And uh, let me show you. Yeah, so. For, for this part, I use completely different tools. So what I will do is clamp my ribs. So they don't move. You're trying to maintain 
I mean, I have a pencil. I have a pencil line on the other side where the ribs are attached. And uh, very, uh, very importantly, is I have locating pins. Yeah, locating pins are your friend. Some people don't like them. Some makers say they don't like them. I love locating pins. So those are these um, pins sticking out here. Yeah, we can go ahead and saw that off. So that's going through my plate and it's going into the top block. This cannot move, yeah? We don't need a clamp here because we have a locating pin. Um, no, I saw that one off. Yeah, so I know that this is gonna be pretty stable, but I wanna keep my ribs uh, on the outline of the, of the back plate, you know. So I'll just put my clamps here. probably don't need, need as, as many, or you can just be really safe. But again, you can move, you know, the, once the, the outline is, of the purfling is routed, then you're, you know, you have to commit, more or less. Um, enough for now really we're so we're so far away from <laughs> where we're trying to go I purposely leave a lot of edge because I want to be safe and I want to be flexible so yeah th for this I'm using my flat bottom plane and you can see I've got it that's kind of actually not cool yeah that's better and you can see it's on a dummy board. That's what I call a dummy board. And that's what I, this is what I used to build the uh, violone. So, yeah. So yeah, this, you got your flat bottom plane and get a nice smooth line. Actually, it's kind of shaking. I don't like that, so. Um, pretty self-explanatory now you're just taking your plane and ma making a nice smooth line All right. so when you get to here the grain will change and you'll you have no choice but to either use the file This part you can do pretty pretty fast. Well, you can see I'm getting some chatter. Chatter is when the plane is like cut 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 cut. So that's because the grain is changing here. So then I'll do this. Well, that's really bothering me. It's shaking. we're doing that we're not really doing the final um we're just we're trying to get this rough outline which we can then work uh, I see I got locate that's what's going on okay 
I got a locating pin on the other side, so it's like, there, now it's flat, right? Yeah, so same thing on this side. Just taking your flat plane. And you should be pretty careful because you, you, you get too close and it's not, that's not cool, you know, so. Yeah, you just make a nice elegant line. That's a very, that's a very satisfying sound. Actually, this is a good, tr I have my finger here and I can feel where the, where the ribs are. They're far away. But you got a lot of nastiness there. I can clean that up later. Yeah. Yeah, so I do all this with the with the with this plane until the grain changes. Then you gotta then you gotta flip it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's so much wood here. You can also do it without the ribs attached and just look at your pencil outline. Um, but I prefer to, to work this way. So this part you can do very fast. See, see how I'm getting chatter? So actually, it shouldn't be chattering here. Yeah. It's just that it's just that area. Remember, that's sort of uh, the grain doesn't know what it's doing. You know. If you remember, so yeah, and then so I did this sort of rough. Now, do the same thing on this side. Um, again, so you're looking at your corners, right? Your corners are pointing this way. You want this corner sort of pointing a similar way. And then you're looking at your um, you're looking at your original on your electronic device in my case um paper i don't like i like paper paper's better than the computer screen right so yeah i just This, this line is nuts. That's from the spiral saw. I mean, <laughs> because you can't really get a coping saw um, in here, you know? You can't, you can't cut that curve because the saw is just, unless you had a saw that was this, you know? So yeah, I know I got a lot of I'm a, some of the other tools that I use. Let's pretend that we're very close to um, the ribs, which we're not. So then I use, I've had this for like 20 years. <laughs> it's, it's actually a perfume top. Um, and this is much better for a uh, violin because on a violin, or in this case, a viola. Ah, well, this is a good example. This is a viola that's, um, it's going to be the modern viola, and it'll be the first modern one that I've made in, um, gosh, two years. Um, uh, 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 yeah, it's, this will be nice, this will be a nice viola. Um, this isn't done being tuned yet, but you can see, this is what sort of rough edge work looks like. 
Uh, I actually haven't, I haven't really touched it very much at all. You see the purfling is already done and it's mm, probably not perfect. Um, because I don't care about perfect bee stings. Um, I respect when when makers do it, and wow, this is this is responding. Oh, oh, oh. That's good. Um, I respect when makers do great great bee stings, but I really don't care. You know. Um, yeah, I'm happy with um, this, but the the edges, as you can see, they're very square. They're very ugly. They're very mechanical. You can see I used the tooth plane here, it looks like. Um, yeah, so that's what you're going for, is this very elegant mirror of your ribs. And um, the purfling is, it, 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 just be careful. You, you want to really spend a lot of time when you get to this phase. Um, yeah, so this is a different video, but um, I, I use this, you know, I'm looking at it this way and I'm And because all my instruments are antiqued, I use a lot of sandpaper on the uh, um, that, that, That's a different video. So uh, For a cello you have your baking soda can, right? And you know why? Look at that. It fits. Can you see? Look at that. It fits perfectly. Yeah. Like Marco says, a uh, file and virtuoso. A yeah. file virtuoso. Well, I am a baking soda and sandpaper virtuoso. <laughs> this is not final. Trust me. This is also just to. And then you can do these kind of movements, you know, once you get close. We're still way, way far away. Oh, this is, oops. <laughs> Shut the top. You can do this. Because you can actually remove less uh, with sandpaper than you can with a knife. A knife is pretty extreme. Only if you're a badass like Jose can you can you do everything with a knife. Um, um, I could, but I don't want to. I like this method. I like the method of, um, especially the file method, I really, really like. So, how much time are we? We are 33. Yeah, so the main thing is to understand the technique and, um, yeah, work in batches. Um, my strategy is, uh, you could t talk really quickly about um, when you're making your website. Uh, my advice is to don't make instruments that you think that you think, okay, I'm gonna make this and this is gonna sell. Um, my advice is to make instruments that won't sell. <laughs> and the reason for that is um, you wanna make instruments that you love because, the, because your heart is gonna be into it and when you love them, they sound better. And also, if, if you have freaky tastes like me, there's going to be someone in the world who who sees, who recognizes your own freaky uh, taste in instruments. Some people prefer clean, perfectly Stradivari type uh, craftsmanship. Uh, I don't. I like freaky, crazy. <laughs> um, I mean, this is as clean as I get. This is an Amati uh, copy. Not a copy, but a Tabor Amati. And. Um, I'm trying to, actually, I'm trying to mimic Jose's work on here, believe it or not, and failing, because he is a bad ass. Um, yeah, I'm really following 
the Amatis kind of um, not so much with the arching, but um, I always do my own arching. But yeah, I have freaky tastes, you know. So yeah, what my, I guess my point is, um, I, I stumbled across this this way of working because I made the five string piccolo cello, and I thought, oh, this would be great. This won't sell, and I can play it, you know. And you know what happened? It sold before it even got the, to the varnished stage. Uh, so it sold to Leslie Tan, the great uh, cellist from Singapore. Uh, he's coming here in June to have some setup uh, work done, and we're going to redo the, the, the entire setup because, um, um, yeah, so my strategy was um, the, the other, you know, I'd, okay, I'll do a modern, this was what I did before. I would do a modern, start with a modern violin, right? Let's say you're making your website. So you want a modern violin, and then you do a Baroque violin. Get those online. And then you want to do a viola, right? You should have a viola always for sale on your website, right? So then you want to do a Baroque viola, right? One of each, yeah? And this was my strategy previously. Like, so when something sells, okay, now we make a Baroque, Baroque viola. Um, but now I am actually, and then you're going get, to start getting commissions, and that throws a, a rod in the machinery right there because you have to stop, in theory, you have to stop what you're doing and work on the instrument for the musician. Uh, I am probably going to just start not taking commissions anymore. Um, <laughs> I make what, from now on, may, I'm considering this. I have, uh, I had, there's actually a waiting list. The next one is a tenor for Dan McCarthy, uh, a, big, a big viola. Oh. And it looks something like this. It's freaky. Anton Posh. So that's next. And then Kieran, the musician in Montreal, nice guy. He lives, eats, breathes cello. He's just cello 24 7. I love him. Uh, he's commissioning a viola di gamba. Yeah, we have the wood for that. We have every, and it's going to have a more head, you know, this um, uh, uh, Moorish uh, head, uh, a male head, and we'll be using black wood for it. Anyway, so yeah, there's a, I have commissions, yeah, um, and I have really good commissions. These are cool. all of them are cool. Like <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm so lucky to to have this this business, you know. But I think what I'm going to do pretty soon is just, I, I only make what I want to, and that's what it, that's what I got. <laughs> uh, unless they can convince me, unless it's something, or obviously if it's something that I'm really interested to make, uh, I want to make a, um, wow, there's so many things I want to make. Uh, well, I want to make a harp, for one thing. I want to make a, a arpa doppia, you know, this Baroque harp. Um, how do you price that? I have no idea. Um, yeah, so I guess that was, um, yeah, when you're starting out, you're probably going to make, make what you love, you know, is my advice. And people will notice, you know. So, yeah, I guess that's it. This is like almost 40 minutes. So that's long enough. Um, and we we'll probably do another one discussing the final, when I get to the final um, edge work. And, but you know why? Because this is a brief rant on Apple products. They don't have USB points. So these videos are not edited because I cannot get them off the iPad on the computer. You try air dropping, you try, okay. You know, there's no one nearby. Well, the computer's right next to it. Okay, so you look on the internet, right? How do I fix this airdrop problem? And they say, have you, tr they say, turn it off and on again. <laughs> really? It's like, you know, the IT crowd, have you tried turning it off and on again? You know, like, so I tried turning it off and on again. Thanks, Apple. And it still doesn't work. There's no one, there's no device nearby. Okay, well, we plug it in. Right? <laughs> no, it's not nearby. Well, it's plugged into your fucking USB. Yeah. Ah! Right? <laughs> it 
Other times you turn it on. And, oh, do loop. Yeah, uh, airdrop. You know. Okay, yeah, let's airdrop. Anyway, we're not gonna. <laughs> so this is a note to Apple: put USB ports on your devices. Thank you. <laughs>